Alright then, so today is going to be a short, relatively short, although I don't actually know, I could ramble on for 20 minutes about this subject, but today is going to be a video about why libertarian socialism is an oxymoronic ideology. So oxymoronic is basically meaning contradicting or cannot exist. So libertarian socialism is based on, you know, obviously I'm based on socialism, based on collectivism, and based on the common ownership of, you know, the means of production by the proletariat, by Marx, and by, like libertarianism, meaning it opposes the, the state. So that sounds all good in theory, right? You have the collective ownership of property, and you have the opposition to statism. So that doesn't sound too bad, right? But then you actually get into how this ideology would work. And then you start to kind of, you know, hmm, how would this work? How would it be structured? So normal libertarianism, aka libertarian capitalism, it's pretty self-explanatory. People would not be limited by any monopoly. So they wouldn't, there wouldn't be coercion in the market. Essentially how it would work is that people, you know, people have certain natural rights. Their right to life, to liberty, and property. So in a libertarian society, these rights wouldn't be, you know, these rights would be protected by, you know, by, you know, natural law. And besides that, you can do anything with your property that you wish, as long as you're not violating a person's natural right, you know, to life, liberty, and property. So that's all good. So that's normal libertarianism. You have a capitalist economy in which people exchange tra and trade their property. You know, they have voluntary exchange. They own private property and it's free enterprise. They innovate, they create, they start businesses. Capitalism with, you know, libertarianism. So they have their natural rights and law is just meant to protect their natural rights and not infringe on their own natural rights. So it's only meant to protect their natural rights. Like unlike modern law, which, you know, infringes on your natural rights a lot, you have libertarianism, which doesn't. Okay, so that's all well and good. So you have libertarianism. But then libertarian socialism ignores the fact that under socialism, natural rights are constantly violated. Now, Libertarian socialists claim that that's state socialism and that's a wrong kind of socialism. Okay, then I proceed to ask, how would your society be structured? And they can't really give me an answer. They would say that it would be structured based on, com I guess, like communal, you know, like, sort of like the kibbutz in Israel where the pro property is collectively owned. But that's only possible in an extremely small society society so anyways my main point is that socialism has to have a centralized authority now what why is why does it have to have a centralized authority well the main reason is human behavior human behavior and action governs us so capitalism and the idea of voluntary exchange and ownership of private property is voluntary and is natural. So the ownership of private property is natural due to scarcity and the exchange of it is natural because pe both sides benefit from the exchange, you know, Austrian economics. So libertarian socialism is against human behavior, is going against human behavior because people naturally like to own and own property and use it, you know, innovate, create, exchange, start businesses, enter innovate or just work for someone else if they can't do that so but under libertarian socialism or in general just socialism forget the libertarian part for now you have no part you have no way to do this you have no way to own private property because so that's where the first contradiction comes in is under libertarian socialism what would stop people from owning private property and exchanging it nothing because libertarianism means you don't have coercion you don't have monopolized aggression and you don't have a state 
to actually stop people from doing this. You don't have a state that infringes on your natural rights. So that's libertarianism, as I already explained. So, libertarian socialism is effectively what would stop people from just owning and collective and like, you know, owning and exchanging private property. You know, capitalism. What would stop that? As I see it, nothing. Because libertarianism, you cannot infringe on someone's property rights to property. And, that, and, and it should just end right here, right? I mean, I could just call it a day, but I'm going to explain it even further in more detail. So socialism means, again, the collective ownership of property and the means of production. So that's only possible under a large state because only under a large state can this happen. And only under a large state can an economy be planned. Socialism is a central system, meaning it has to have a central authority to work. It's a very centralized system. Because in order to plan an economy, you need a centralized authority. In order to even, you know, as Mises put it, you have the economic calculation problem. Which means you can't model an, an economy based on natural human behavior. Because you can't model natural human behavior. Humans are almost impossible to predict. You can model them, but you can't plan an economy. Which is based on proxyology, also known as human behavior and human action. You can't model it. Eventually there will be errors. Even with... The most advanced computers of the future, AI can't do it. It still can't model human behavior. It's impossible because only we, only we can act and only we can decide our own fate, if you know what I mean. So, under libertarian socialism, you also have, you know, the, co the common ownership of property, which can only be done under a authoritarian state. So, under socialism, because of the common ownership of property, there's no incentive to work because since everyone receives the same thing and it's equal work for equal pay or whatever this is, there's no opportunity for innovation. There's no reason to in to innovate. There's no reason to produce. There's no reason. So the e economy will be stagnant. And people would become lazy and greedy and start stealing and abusing the system. Because capitalism handles greed the best and socialism lets greed flourish and destroy the system. Well, not flourish. You know, greed just occurs and it destroys the society because humans are naturally greedy, selfish creatures. We're not, we're not these selfless angels. We're greedy creatures. So under libertarian socialism if it would even exist, which it might not even, like, form, people would abuse the system, steal, you know, well, you could say that stealing happens under capitalism, but thanks to private property laws, it's much harder to steal. People would not work, they would, they would just not work, because there's no incentive to work. Because since you get everything already under you know, communism, since you already get everything, you can freely pick up whatever you want at the store, no reason to work, greed, laziness will kick in, and the only way to force people to work so this process can even get started is an authoritarian state. So this is my final argument about libertarian socialism, in that libertarian socialism requires a centralized authority, not only so that they can even begin to solve the Cal economic calculation problem and plan the economy but also so that they can you know force people to work because under socialism there's no incentive to work and there's no incentive to innovate to produce and obviously since socialism is against enterprise because it's against private property because entrepreneurship requires a starting point it requires private property so it's against that, so it would be it would be a fairly stagnant, if not regressive, society in which laziness and greed would kick in, and the society would collapse, and that would lead to an authoritarian state stabilizing things and forcing people to work. So yeah, that's my main argument against libertarian socialism is that it needs an authoritarian state because socialism inherently this idea of common ownership needs an authoritarian state not only to plan the economy but to force people to actually work because natural human behavior, capitalism, unlike socialism, actually rewards innovation, rewards hard work. 
and discourages laziness, discourages, you know, well, you could say it doesn't discourage greed, but it definitely discourages laziness and it encourages hard work and innovation. And that's why the society, you know, moves uh, under capitalism, progresses, and we have higher standards of living than ever, thanks to free enterprise. Under socialism, obviously, since there's no such goal for people to have, since it discourages enterprise because you can just get whatever you want, that's why they need an authoritarian state to actually force people to work, since there's no, you know, there's no need to work, I guess. There's no incentive to work. So, yeah, that's my main argument. And what is this, 10 minutes so far? 10 minutes of me rambling? Anyways, that's all. Goodbye. Enjoy your day. Peace out.